here we have a building in the historic area of Sydney, right on the harbour, known as the Rocks. And our aim is to draw this freehand in ink and maintain all the proportions we have of this beautiful Victorian facade. How am I thinking? What are my plans to help me draw this as accurately as possible, keeping these proportions? Personally, I find that when street level is as cluttered as most street levels are, I prefer to start in a section of the building where I can get a nice clean line top and bottom, which for this building is obviously these two lines here. It's very important to get these perspective angles correct. With all the clutter down here, it's a little more forgiving if something's not quite right. Now there are two ways we could draw this section. We could draw this shape first and then divide it up into four sections and draw each of those. And this is a very good way of drawing and it's often taught. You draw the basic, larger basic shapes first and then you add the detail. However, generally I tend not to use it or at least not to use it for such a large space as this because in drawing architecture with lots of detail, I find that if you don't get the proportions accurate, then you end up either having the facade too long and therefore you've got gaps or you've got the detail wider than it should be, or you've drawn the facade a bit too narrow, in which case it's hard to squeeze in the detail, not have it look misshapen. So in a scene such as this, I prefer to take this as my if you like, smaller basic shape, and then move down. Once I've got these four sections happily drawn, then it's going to be much easier to move upwards to draw these four decorative pieces in proportion, and also to come down for the shop level. And then the main thing is to get the top of this street furniture and these cars in the right place and then draw these cars in the right proportion. Now despite the fact that this looks architecturally a nice precise building with lots of lines, I'm wanting to draw it in a fairly loose gestural style and I'm hoping to do the drawing in about 30 minutes. This left hand corner of the building is the obvious place to start and really to establish the proportions of this upper floor section between the two fairly strong horizontal decorative cornice elements. I take a bit of time with this angle. It takes me a bit longer than I thought. I made it too shallow, then I made it too deep, and then I found a mark, something between the two, and finally got it happening, something I was looking at. Sometimes we need to sort of compromise our techniques and think, yes, measure it but then also have a look at it and just see, now does that look right? Now once I've done that, I, I need to start moving across with these vertical elements of the windows and the spaces between the windows. If I were drawing this again, I think I would just seek to do the pilasters between the windows first and to establish each of those sections and to get the foreshortening more accurate than I got it by doing this more bit by bit way. I think that would have been an easier way to have got the four long vertical rectangles nicely foreshortened and then into those squeezed whatever windows and other bits I needed to squeeze. So it's always good to critique our technique and the results we got and to work out is there another way I could do it? Is there another way if I was starting now? I did start though with this centre section because it was the least complicated band of the three or four decorative bands there are in this section that I'm drawing now. And I thought if I get the centre ones correct I can go up and go down to complete this centre part of the facade of the building. I finished up getting just a bit lost with all of these vertical lines at times, which is another reason why I decided it wasn't such a great technique. Fortunately though, I think there is enough in the whole thing to be able to distract the worst elements of, of um, what I wasn't happy about. 
and it was surprisingly difficult with these first windows to actually place where the windows were against the other elements on the facade. It, it really wasn't intuitive. The windows didn't stop where I thought they were going to stop in either case and so the first horizontal bars I, I put in without really thinking or looking too closely were in the wrong place. And then it was hard to get them in the right place when I moved to the right. So it really just belies the fact that we need to observe so carefully. I was really quite surprised I didn't get it right. Presumption can be a very misleading thing. And there are all these horizontal lines in the facade, which of course, as they move across the whole facade, need to follow the same perspective angles. And I was, for each of the different architectural elements that were in a horizontal band, I would do dots or light dashes across the facade just to help me line up the more with, the, with whatever perspective angle was needed. So now we have these, these uh, little arch windows at the top. These, these arches were probably the thing I had the most trouble with, particularly because I, in the end, didn't divide up my sections very well. And so the second section was a bit large for the third section, which was really not quite large enough. So everything did end up getting a bit squeezed when it came to these top arches. I also discovered um, around this time when I stood up and looked through the camera that my camera isn't sitting particularly parallel to the paper in the stand. It's, it's a bit of an old stand and it's, it's twisted here and there and, and it's a bit of an effort to set up and because the camera wasn't parallel to the paper, it's distorting the way the drawing looks. So while it isn't perfectly straight up and down on the vertical, it doesn't twist inwards quite the way it looks. It looks better in life than it does in the video. And this is where I began to get lost too in just what gaps were window gaps and what gaps were brickwork between the windows or where we, we were seeing a little indented something side on. It did get a little bit confusing and exactly then as I became aware that my vertical foreshortening wasn't as precise as I would have liked, I began to try and shift what some of these vertical spaces I defined were and change some of them to that main pillar that hadn't actually been that, that main or pilaster really. Then I began to get a bit confused myself because I wasn't sure what was what. So generally I was starting to wish I'd spend a little more time just framing this better and as I said to have maybe established the four large vertical rectangles in a very basic form before I started to put all the window detail in. But at least by this stage I'm aware of how the windows start and finish and what they line up with on the horizontal so that that becomes quicker. It's uh, funny as I was looking at this drawing I was thinking that these four decorative raised signs on the front of the building above each of the sections were, were going to be the hardest thing to draw and yet the truth is by the time I got to drawing them I was quite warmed up and they they turned out rather nicely. Unfortunately when I was drawing the, the last three of them I'd forgotten to turn the camera on so they they suddenly appear but uh, just after I finish the one that I'm about to draw here. And that always I find is a bit of a frustration with drawing that it does take you a while to get warmed up. Maybe we all should do a, a warm-up drawing first so that we establish that greater confidence with the line that, that we seem to get as we've drawn for a bit. But then it's also we, we actually start to understand the building that we're drawing better because we've simply observed it more by this stage. So here I am just working out how these structures go and what 
lines I'm actually going to use to represent the parts I want to draw. But I am working hard to get this perspective angle line under these semicircular sort of arches on the top, keeping that all very precisely in with the, the perspective angles that we've already established. It really is important to get these other architectural elements just as much in the perspective angles as the windows and cornices and rooftops and the like. And I'm still trying to make adjustments to make it a little more vertical. Then it's about here I think that we suddenly pop and we get the rest of the tops done. Just checking the angles. Of, I'm just putting some dots where I want those tops to line up and there they are and we get the side windows as well. So now the central section and upper section and even the left hand side section are done. So it's time to start thinking about this street level section and we have, have a much I think better chance of getting the proportions correct having drawn the rest of the building already and we can line everything up at least vertically under the sections that it's meant to be in. So I, I come down as, as closely as I can I make a few mistakes, a few things I have to draw over other lines. Start to establish the facade, get, get the street elements that are in front of the facade, such as the umbrella and awnings in place. There are these, these barriers that sit on the street to create some seating areas for a, a, a cafe or something, I assume. But then there's also some cars parked in front and getting this car done. I mean, the car, I was happy enough with the car. Cars are always a bit of a challenge for me, but it's probably just not quite high enough. I should have taken the, I think, windows and the roof just a, just a couple of millimeters higher. And I think it would have sat happier outside. I was happy with where the wheels were. It was just, I think the roof could have gone up a little bit more. And then there was a, a tradies ute in front with uh, some building supplies strapped onto the racks there. If I get those done before I start moving backwards now with the barriers on the road. And of course with these now, my perspective angles are going the other way. They're angling upwards from left to right towards eye level. So I'm having to, to measure these and get these in place because uh, although there is um, obviously a perspective line where the building hits the ground level, we really can see so little of that that this this, li this line along the base of the um, road barriers really is the main perspective angle in the lower part of the joint. There are a few lines that go along the roadway where the asphalt joins and I've suggested those in a few dots because they also happily follow the perspective angle so I think it's it's works well to to include those. And now really I've done the, the core of the, the drawing and it's looking at the things that are around the building that aren't the building. And it's always good to give us much context as, as uh, supports the main subject without overpowering it. So I do some very light gestural indications of the buildings that are next to this one on the right. And then I think, look, I'm going to bring these branches in. I, I really quite like the way branches work when they come down from the top or from the side or the top corner of a scene. Whether they've got leaves on them or they're bare, I didn't take these in front of the building because, actually because I forgot to, I was, I was going to. But, uh, but I, I don't like drawing them just straight, even if they're bare, branches. I don't, I don't like drawing them over the lines of the facade because I don't think that creates the right effect that we get in life when we see branches in front of the facade. So I stop them before they hit the building and just draw them with a light touch. And it's always good to try and capture the growing pattern, the way that the branch grows and the way it turns and how long the sections are until it changes directions and how the branch, the twigs break off and 
all of that. It's always good to try and capture some of that and also to give a sense that some branches are closer than other branches, that there is some depth as well. So I try to do all of that in those branches at the top. And then there's just a little bit more work with the, the shop fronts and inside some of the windows, the things that we can see inside. Really with, with windows, just want to suggest the things that are behind them. We don't want to get too precise with that. And so I'm now just, just looking to see, is there anything else that really needs to be done? Fixing up this little uh, sitting area that wasn't super easy to make out from the reference anyway. So bear in mind that the building doesn't look quite so narrow in towards the bottom in life. And of course in the photo, the lens distortion means that it narrows as it goes upwards, but I didn't want to include that in my drawing. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Hope you found this interesting, just seeing my process as, as I drew this. And I'll put this photo also on my community page. And so you can print off a copy as well. It's one of my photos, so there's no problem. You can print a copy off, you can draw it yourself and see how you go with this facade from the rocks in Sydney. But whatever you're drawing, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.